What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day here, enjoying a wonderful time with my wife, getting ready to go out, do some sightseeing, and going to dinner. Uh, shout out to the person who told me about going to New York Prime. We have reservations for 5.30 today. We're going to go eat a steak, and my wife, we're told, you got to get the chilling bath. So we'll, we'll let you know how all that goes and stuff with our anniversary. But just because I'm having my anniversary doesn't mean that it stops. And I want to say, everybody who ended up making a comment about the post that I put up last night with... Um, that I wasn't going to be live streaming tonight. My wife read every single comment. Well, at least she did a couple hours ago. If there's more, she'll be reading them. She got a good laugh out of some of the ones that were on there. Uh, I believe she gave a thumbs up to every single one of them. So I appreciate that. So we have some interesting news here. Um, Dan Quinn has officially finished his interview with the commanders with the left hand up. I'm sorry, left hand up. What's interesting to me was yesterday he was there getting ready for the East-West Shine game at AT&T, still wearing his cowboy stuff. And it sounded like um, Johnson, uh, Brad Johnson, the offensive coordinator for the Lions, seemed like that was the guy that the commanders were locked in on. That they, and this is where I was kind of confused because I heard that um, Dan Quinn was flying in for Monday for his interview on Tuesday, and then this morning I heard that Washington delegation was in Detroit. So Dan Quinn had to fly to Washington to have his interview. It was supposed to have the same day that the, they flew to Detroit to interview Johnson, Mr. Johnson, okay? And apparently Mr. Johnson's Johnson is really big with this price tag. And allegedly... The commander's new ownership, Josh Harris, okay, that got, you know, that, that took over, bought the team from Dan Snyder, is evidently maybe a little bit frugal because apparently what we are told is um, they were shocked by what he wants to get paid. And I can't say that I blame him because Washington is where careers go to die. Now, maybe that changes with Mr. Harris. But apparently, they sound like they might still be a little bit cheap. So, now, how does that affect us as Cowboy fans? Well, if Dan Quinn had already done his interview today, okay, which finished up a couple hours ago, and they were really targeting Mr. Johnson, but he wants a whole lot more money, and they are, you know, the new Jerry Jones where they're frugal with their money, then it sounds like Dan Quinn may be back in play for the Commanders. I don't know. I don't know. Now, I think the Cowboys, and this is where all of this stuff is, is so conflicted right now. Because the Cowboys for a couple of weeks have been kind of telling you that if Dan Quinn doesn't get a head coaching job, that he will be remaining as the Cowboys coach. And it all seemed like, you know, the Seattle Seahawks, uh, I thought that would for sure be the job that he would get and covet the most. But he did the interview with the commanders today. So those are the only two jobs that are there. It doesn't seem like Seattle is on board with him being there. So this may be the second round where Dan Quinn may become the Washington commanders head coach. Now the question you have to ask is, does he want to be the head coach of the Washington commanders, a place that careers go to die? I don't know, but the Cowboys have been basically acting like he's going to be the guy coming back, and I believe what they did with the way they tried to sell it to us is put out there that Ron Rivera could be the interim, I mean, excuse me, could be the defensive coordinator, because we as Cowboy fans would say, no, we don't want that Washington commander stank. Oh, hell no, which would make Dan Quinn more appealing. I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know what Jerry Jones is doing. But if it ends up being that he does decide that he is going elsewhere, then that kind of leaves us holding the bag because we've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting um, for Dan Quinn to make a move. 
And it may end up being that Ron Rivera might be one of the last people left on the dance card to possibly come to the Dallas Cowboys. As crazy as it sounds, that's the possibility. But to make this even worse, here's the idea behind it that gets even cray crayer. It's not that Jerry Jones has not fired a coach before during the season. He did with Wade Phillips, and you have to say the Cowboys having that first place schedule and having the 16 free agents that we have, knowing that good old cat boy, um, he doesn't even bother to even know about the players that people are trying to trade to you. That cat boy is de facto general manager and owner because Jerry Jones has kind of put him in charge because he's not taking care of the daily operation and that cat boy is not going to take any chances. We could be in trouble. Now, if they do in fact hire Ron Rivera and let's say they don't go out and get any premier free agents, you hear rumors about, you know, they may trade uh, Brandon Cooks, so you know if they trade Brandon Cooks to Cleveland, he's going to get a 1,000-yard season, and of course, we'll get trashed for doing that. And I don't know who's injured on the roster, but then they'll probably get a big, fat paycheck to make sure that they become the starter, and we end up blaming Dak Prescott because the Cowboys won't go out and get a running back. See, you know, instead of them going out and getting Saquon Barkley or um, uh, uh, Derrick Henry, you know, they'll probably go out and get Alfred Morris now. Bring him out of retirement. He ain't played a couple of years just like they did with Alden Smith. Just like they're doing with uh, uh, D D D Dartavia, uh, B Martavius Bryant. Oh, you ain't played in three years? Okay, come on. Oh, you're injured? Oh, come on. As opposed to getting people that can actually play and help you win. And so then, you're in the middle of a season, you have a bunch of losses, and you're trying to appease the masses, and you fire Mike McCarthy, a guy who's got you three 12-win seasons without you busting a grape to help him out. You fire him, and then you hire the next man up, and then it's Ron Rivera. And the reason I can see all that happening is because Jerry Jones has one thing that he likes. And we all know what that is. I, I know you're not looking at me. I know I know you're not looking at me. I know you're looking at the way. I, it's beautiful. It's chilly. It's only about 52 degrees outside. But it is beautiful. Not as beautiful as my wife now, but it is beautiful. But be that as it may, the one thing that Jerry Jones likes, the one thing that Jerry Jones craves, the one thing that Jerry Jones is just happy about besides the pile of money is that you, me, and everybody else is talking about the Cowboys. And moves like that keep everybody talking about the Dallas Cowboys. All right, good people. We'll go get the car, and we're going to go out and see some sights here at Myrtle Beach. We'll see what we're going to see. Peace.